Greetings, adventure. Welcome to D20 Academy. I'm your host, Shell Kanishiro, and today's episode 17, Your Campaign. Alright, so today I'm joined by my two good friends, um, Gabriel and Ezekiel, and um, we actually start talking about campaign setting uh, in the beginning. That was the original topic. But as most in these sessions I want to do, it kind of devolves uh, into a different conversation. Uh, it's still a very good conversation. We just kind of talk about our campaign, what we've kind of learned, um, you know, some of the good things about it, some things we want to try in the next campaign. Uh, you know, just talk about all these, all you know, different kinds of campaigns, different ways of running the game, um, their experience as players, my experience as DM, and all of that. Um, I think it has some really good, uh, good stuff in there, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so today, um, I'm, hello everyone. Yeah, welcome back to D Twenty Academy. All right, our topic today is going to be campaign setting. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy okay. this nice okay. personal experience. Okay. All right, so uh, that <laughs> that was uh, that was Gabe. He's back. Last back again. Last time you were here was a while ago. You, I'm gonna look it up right now. And we also have Zeke. <laughs> hello. Say hi, Zeke. Yeah, so, um, Hi, Zeke. as you can, as you heard from Gabe in a wonderful, uh, ASMR form, um, we will be talking about campaign setting today. Uh, yeah, episode four was the last time you were, you were here. Nice. It was the only time you were on this podcast. And you weren't back again for another, what, like, 12 episodes, which says something probably about you. Anyway. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, so, we're gonna be talking about campaign setting today. Um, so both uh, Gabe and Zeke are in my uh, the campaign that I'm running right now, which has been going for like a long time. Yeah, like I, two and a half years. Now. It's two and a half years. We started it what January? Yep. Of like 20, 2016 maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been playing for a long time, and it's really close to being done. Um, we're at the we're at the final few sessions right now, um, as the story. Wait, no, no, twenty seventeen. January 2017. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> January 2017. Yeah. That sounds right. Here, I can look it up. See, I have it sniffy. Uh, anyway, we are coming to the end of our um, our, our, our campaign really soon. Um, so that's going to be really cool. Uh, when we finish that off, maybe we'll do another... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sounds your phone. Uh, maybe we'll do uh, another so thing. so popular. Maybe we'll do another thing about talking about kind of the reflecting on the campaign and, you know, how that went. Yeah. Because it's been, it's been quite an experience. Yeah, January 22nd, 2017. So we're at, like, two, two and a half years. Yeah. That's that's pretty weird. Zeke was not here in the beginning. Nope. Um, in the beginning Gabe. was not Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe, though, was. Gabe has been here from the very beginning. Um, yep. Yeah, I'm kind of the godfather he's, of He's kind of the, the grandfather of the campaign. Um, but yeah, so, campaign setting. We are, we played our campaign, uh, in a world called Mockvin Star. Um, it's a campaign setting that I made, um, will have been making <laughs> as we're playing the campaign. <laughs> I was, like, at the beginning, pretty sure, like, yeah. geography wasn't really there. Yeah, and, like, we still don't places. know how, how, like, big it is. Like, I have a map of the whole continent, and then it'll be, like... The distance between these things and how long it takes to travel <laughs> has just changed so much over the campaign. Sure, one time it took a couple hours, the other time it took a couple days. Yeah, we, I, mean, I don't... You know, who's counting? I don't really know how big At it is. At least we always get the time zones correct, though. I yeah, think we, we do. do take precautions, we, like, we argue yeah, about like, this. Like, okay, oh, no, no, like, no, no, okay no, no, we're going to no, teleport no, no. to this part, which is, like, halfway across the continent, and so we're, like, we're trying to figure out the time zones. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, uh, quickly addressing that... Um, I don't know in your experience, but I think there's this weird, I don't know where this is coming from, there's this weird, like, stigma for, like, new DMs to build a world from scratch. Mm. I just, I found... You kind of just said it right there, building a world from scratch. Yeah. That's kind of daunting. Yeah, exactly. But, like, every new DM that, like, I've, I've encountered is, is, like, building a world. Like, oh, I'm starting a campaign. I'm like, oh, I'd love to be in it. And then they're like... Yeah, so I'm building this world, and I'm like, why is everyone building a world? I mean, I did. So I'm not, like, condemning those people or anything, because I, I, I did that as well. Um, but it has not been, you know, the best experience. It's been really hard to, you know, build a whole world. 
when you start running thing, you try to start building world. You try to start building world as well. Um, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, it's so much work. But yeah, it's good work. Yeah, I mean, I think first like because there's certain people who enjoy it. You know, people who are maybe writers or like novelists and stuff. They really like world building and you know the fantasy genre and stuff. But it's I a mean, lot of information to try and get down, especially if you're experiencing a, a new medium. You know, having like okay, how can I fit this into a D and D setting where I have to figure out oh my my players are going to go there and I have no idea what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to try and yeah, there's compensate for that. But there is so much. That goes into, like, a campaign setting. Like, more than just, like, a map. There's, like, what kind of, like, monsters are in there? What are, like, the histories of these monsters and the locations that they're found in these biomes and these races? What's the, the racial tension? What's the stranger's name that I'm sitting next to at this tavern yeah. in the middle of nowhere? That's the hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, I gotta, I want to talk to the bartender. You're like, I don't have a bartender plan. Um, which we will get into in a second. But, yeah, there is this weird uh, stigma for DMs, to, new DMs, to, like, build a world from scratch. Which is weird. And, I mean, I did it. It was a thing that I felt like that I, that I had to do for some reason. Um, I, I love Markman Star. I think our campaign setting is pretty cool, but, you know, it's taken me this whole time. I'm still building onto it um, as we keep playing the campaign. You know, I, like, on, on the map, I have, like, this city, and I have no information about that city. I just, like, put a city there, and I gave it a name, and I'm like, I don't know what that's going to be. And then they're like, let's go to that city. <laughs> I'm like, now I have to figure out what the city is. Um, so if you are going to do that, which, you know, I would say it takes a lot of work, can lead to DM burnout really easily. Um, but if you're someone who really likes that, who really wants to do that, uh, yeah, go ahead. Make make your own world from scratch. That's that's really cool. Um, you don't have to build the entire thing before the campaign starts. Like, you can build as is needed as the campaign goes along. Um, because otherwise, it's just so much work and so much information you have to think of. And you're going to run out of creativity, like, really quickly. Um, so yeah, other than that, campaign setting, <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's pretty important, right? It kind of dictates, like, everything, like, the level of magic, the level of yeah. danger, the relations between races and mm-hmm. social classes. Politics and everything, I mean, religion, it's, yeah, it's like crazy. That. Um, have we played in any other, we've done, like, one shots in, like, the Forgotten Realms, like, Waterdeep or something. Oh. Other than one shots, I don't think we've like spent a lot of time. Ben didn't try. What was it? Out of the abyss. Out of the abyss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We did run that, which is in mm-hmm. the Forgotten Realms, I think. Um, so yeah, we 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 did do that for a while. Um, but also uh, his first one, other than <laughs> the Shrek, thing, <laughs> other than that thing, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the first campaign. Uh, uh, one of the other members, uh, who's who's in uh, one of the players in in my campaign, um, he DM'd uh, a Game of Thrones campaign, uh, which is lit. That's really cool. Um, that's something that I suggest. If you're not going to take a campaign setting um, like Forgotten Realms or Eberron or something, um, take something that you already have lots of knowledge on and love. You know, like Middle-Earth or Yeah, Westeros. we did a couple, like, one-shots in Middle-Earth. In Middle-Earth, yeah. Or, like, you know, whatever. What's the place in, like, Aragon called? Algasia or something like that. And then there's, like... Um... Sounds really racially insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, Westeros... That's from Game of Thrones. Um, the thing was, though, <laughs> no one who was playing <laughs> knew it, watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, <laughs> so he yeah. was the only one who watched it. Um, which, in a way, I think is kind of good, because then he can just, like, copy and paste <laughs> the story and the characters. <laughs> and we'd be like, whoa, this is crazy. How is he coming up with this? Um, but yeah, so that, that's really cool. He took something that he already loved and knew knowledge about, and if he needs the answer to something, he could just look it up on the internet. And someone's already done the work for him. Um, you know... Doing that, choosing that kind of thing as a campaign setting, I think, is, is really cool as well. Um, are there any things you guys have wanted to, like, explore as a campaign setting? Like, anything that's interested you? Oh, the, our next campaign that we're going to be doing is going to be in Ravnica. Um, so, Ravnica is a world in Magic the Gathering. It's one of, like, their planes. Um, and then they recently released a, a book called The Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, uh, a D&D supplement which like has uh, rules and stuff uh, information if you want to play your campaign in Ravnica and it's really lit yeah it's uh, a lot of information it's really cool yeah it's really cool um, so we're going to be doing that in our next campaign uh, mostly because it's they have a supplement for it so I can rely on a lot of that the world is already built from tons of Magic the Gathering lore um, I 
love Magic the Gathering a lot, um, so it's really cool for me. In um, case you guys didn't know, he's a bit of a nerd. I'm a little bit of a nerd. A little bit. <laughs> um, but is there anything like, you guys have wanted to explore a little bit, like play in or... Mm. Well, one thing we talked about before we decided on doing a Ravnica campaign was doing like a, uh, a high seas pirate campaign, yeah. yeah, which is a really interesting setting. Yeah, I think I still want to do that. Like, I still sometimes get ideas that like I jot down for that. Um, and well, the one I was because I was that was gonna be the next one before we got the Ravnica book. So I, the world I planned was like fantasy, but it's also like tons of stuff from this world. So like Blackbeard is like a real person, and like Calico Jack is like real people, and like. There's, like, England, and there's, like, actual places. But, like, some of it is, like, fantasy things. So there's, like, new islands that I've created. There's monsters and magic and stuff. But I was uh, coming up with a disease and wound system because I wanted to get scurvy. Mm. <laughs> I want I to really... play getting scurvy on a ship, you know? It's like, like something really <laughs> deep and dear to my heart. It's like, okay, Gabe, we're playing a pirate campaign. What do you want to get out of it? Scurvy! I, <laughs> <laughs> I really want to get scurvy, and I'm like, okay. Um, but once again... I had learned from, like, building world from scratch. That takes a lot of work. If I can just pull things from actual life, which, by the way, has the most information in any other <laughs> campaign setting, yeah. if you're playing in Earth, um, then, yeah. But, like, I can build, I can still do whatever I want to it. You know what I mean? To change it so that the yeah. campaign is more fun and exciting. So that's something that you, that you can do as well, I think. Um, yeah, I still, I still want to kind of do that thing. At some point. Yeah. I, I want to yeah. explore these different, like, m like tones and moods of campaigns. So, like, the one we're running now is pretty classic campaign. Yeah. Heroism, uh, rising up to the challenge, defeating this thing that's going to destroy the world or take over the world or whatever. Um, kind of high fantasy. Um, this Ravnica one is going to be much more politics, intrigue, mystery. Um, there's, like, these criminal kind of heist elements that's going to be in it. Um Excited there's gonna be change of pace. Yeah, there's gonna be explorations of like morality and alignment and stuff. So that's gonna kind of be a big part of it. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be the, that campaign. And then like the pirate one, swashbuckling, like huge set pieces, really exciting chases, and mm. we we figure out a system for like ship battles and like it would be, yeah, it'd be like really fun, exciting, kind of combat oriented kind of stuff, mm -hmm. which would be really cool. And then we'd also yeah implement some uh, realistic rules, you know, of more like healing and wounds and stuff. Also probably. Because if you're shot with a gun, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's not just like, oh, 20 damage. Good thing I have 80 more hit points. Like, <laughs> yeah. So let me just go jump off a skyscraper. Yeah, we probably make that one like it's a little more like realistic kind of thing. Also because it's set in like Earth. Yeah. You yeah. Know, in, a, in a version of Earth as well. It fits the setting. Like that rule would fit the setting there. Yeah. Because also I think a thing about pirates is like you choose your battles carefully. You don't have a lot of resources. You're on the open ocean a lot. So you have limited resources and stuff, you don't want to just keep fighting everywhere. So it's cool to explore that kind of thing and, like, choosing your battles and stuff. And, like, uh, there's, like, a quote from Blackbeard where he was saying, like, sometimes, like, our whole fleet would be, like, out of food and water. Like, we were, like, on the brink of starvation. Then we come across, like, a royal fleet and we didn't fire a single bullet or waste anything. We jump on and they just be so scared that they surrendered. Like, we use fear tactics and, like, showy stuff so that they surrender and we didn't wow. have to expend any of our resources. And, like, that's really cool to me, you know what I mean? Like, manage, like resource management, that yeah. kind of thing. But then also, I don't want that to be, have to, like, drag down the game or anything like that. You know what I it mean? It really depends on what the players want out of the yeah, game. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. that that can either make the game or drag it down. Yeah. So that's one of the campaign settings, because remember, that's the topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, kind of one of the things uh, <clears throat> that we've been wanting to explore. Well, this episode is kind of how D&D &D sessions go. They start off going one way. <laughs> that's and actually the players true. Are just like... That's hey, let's true. talk about this. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Like, when there's just one person doing a podcast, they can keep on the thing. When there's one person, the DM, they're planning, they keep on this one thing. And the moment <laughs> they get to the table, the moment you add in other people, it just all goes it goes crazy. But that's, you know, that's kind of the reason why. Like, kind of in our awesome. campaign, we started the campaign, escaping from captivity, met some, like, elves. We're like, let's get on a ship. Yeah. Let's, it was a, <laughs> it was a little, little, little too open world at the beginning. Um... But yeah, so our campaign setting, the one that we're playing in, uh, is, is pretty simple. It's pretty similar to like the Forgotten Realms kind of fantasy thing. Yeah. Um, it's much smaller. There's like one continent and there's like three islands and that are like next to it. And then there's like three cities, like big cities, yeah. and then like just towns and villages. So it's a pretty small, which I think was nice for me as a DM. I didn't have to totally build this crazy thing. Um, and also I'm 
bad at estimating distance and time and travel things. So <laughs> I used to be like, yeah, it's small. You just walk across the thing. Um, but how have you guys enjoyed the campaign setting? Because, like, obviously it's different from other campaigns you've played and stuff. And, you know. The and, world. You know. Yeah. The, the world. The world. Hmm. Well, I think this campaign has been really fun for the most part. Uh, I'd say that too. Especially yeah. getting pretty crazy now that we're getting towards the end, and this is kind of the part in the campaign where everything ramps up and either gets really, really fun or really, really <laughs> just like, what are we doing? We're screwed. Yeah. Okay, you know what? Speaking of which, we are very screwed. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna... It's fine. We don't have to talk about campaigns or something. This is great. I think we, we should just go up and just talk about... No, because I think it is good. We're just talking about like campaigns and stuff, and I think that that's that's really good. So we, let's just talk about campaigns straight up. Um, yes. So, real quick, we can talk about campaign progression. So I have done like a little episode on this before in the podcast, but I want to hear about you guys. Um, you know, starting little. Challenges aren't world-threatening, all this stuff, and then you slowly build up, and, you know, the stakes get higher and stuff. I've compared it to, like, Death Note, uh, where at the beginning it's a very small, minuscule thing, and then it becomes, like, world-threatening. And then it gets ruined crazy. by the end. And then it gets ruined. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, like, like the oh stakes God, have to you keep... guys are nerds. Just... <laughs> but, like, the stakes have to keep getting higher and stuff. Well, not necessarily. I've always thought that a campaign setting where everything, progression is extremely slow and you spend a lot more time uh, intimately with the characters and the setting rather than ramping up and just getting to that point where it's the end of the world and you're facing all these crazy villains. I've always thought that it's more fun almost in the beginning when you're you know just fighting goblins and orcs and like, dude i, I totally the, agree you're doing the small stuff you know, you're uncovering yeah. the secret rings of you know cultists and things like yeah. that i've always thought that's the no, most fun i 100 percent agree the most fun is the first five levels yeah dude they are so good and then i think the worst part for this campaign it really started to drag like eight to twelve level mm. yeah, yeah, I, yeah it yeah. was like we were in kind of a rough spot i remember like in that campaign like things were just kind of slow moving and boring and it like i was like this campaign is probably gonna fall apart um it was not good again but then after that it kind of picked up a little yeah. more yeah but yeah you're gonna go through phases in the campaign where it will not be as fun as it once was and stuff um i don't really know what that is sometimes it's just you've been playing this campaign for so long and stuff it's getting to this it just kind of gets to this slower point where everyone's just kind of exhausted <laughs> before they can get the energy to you know continue back up again I think maybe some of it is just the rule set, like like the rules mm -hmm. in D and D, the kind of things you get at those levels and stuff as characters, also might affect. One of the why things kind of slogs during that that I think hurts D and D higher level or like mid level campaigns is just that combat itself in D and D. Mm. It gets a bit. It can get monotonous yeah. at times if you're doing just the same thing over and over again. If you figure out like, oh, this is like the strongest thing for me to do, and I'm just gonna do with that, do that, not trying to do anything creative to figure out a creative solution here. If the most, if the best solution is to just hit the enemy with a hammer, and it's kind of pointless, because that's yeah. the only solution that yeah. makes sense. You know, logic like, oh, this is gonna get us through faster or whatever this is what makes all go sense i think that's kind of a downfall to the yeah. campaign yeah when you're weaker and like you have like very low hit points you're not just r running into battle because like okay we have to actually think about this everything this is so much more risky when you're yeah. low level for sure and yeah. i love that so much the first level because okay the thing about like the beginning what makes it so fun one um typically you guys are playing in a new campaign setting like a new world that's super cool mm -hmm. Uh, two, the DM has these the, the storylines and stuff that he's starting, and he's, like, seeing them come to fruition. It's really exciting and stuff. And the players just built new characters. They're, like, building characters and playing with them for the first time is so fun. And, and it's, like, such, such a cool experience. So the first levels are just so cool. And just little threats. Little things. It doesn't, like, matter to the rest of the world and stuff. That's more personal. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, I think that's really cool. And... It's hard when it comes, you know, because I think you do have to increase the stakes at some point. They're getting more powerful and stuff, the characters are as they level up. Which, you know, you should do. Like, players want to feel like they're getting somewhere, that they're getting better. You mm -hmm. know, that's a really big part of D&D. &D. Um, but, 
you know, the story and the stakes have to match the, with the players as they're getting yeah. stronger and stuff. It has to. Like, that's, it's, otherwise it's really weird and, like, it's kind of bad. If they're I'm getting better. what a campaign would be like if the stakes didn't scale, but the difficulty of the enemies scaled. Just like, and, like imagine you're playing a, like, a video game where the enemies that you're fighting increase in level as you do. Like an RPG. Yeah, like an RPG. But not necessarily, like, oh, just because I'm stronger now, I'm, like, max level doesn't mean that everything has to be world-ending. I yeah, don't think. Right. I think that's a good system. I mean, here's the thing. I feel like that's it's different from D&D, though. Because D&D is, like, there's story and, like, NPCs and stuff, and you start to get renowned. You're saving villages and stuff, and you're protecting people and stuff. So then you become more of a thing, then you get more responsibility as a hero and stuff. And, like, not saying all campaigns have to be, have to be like this, but in the kind that we play, you know what I mean? If you guys just kind of stayed at this one level... It would very it would get slogged and get monotonous super mm-hmm. quickly, I think. So you know, in in be different tones and moods and depending on the flavor of your campaign and stuff. Um, yeah, like it's fine to like kind of keep smaller and, and even if they're getting high levels, the threats aren't more world threatening. But in kind of a classic tropey D and D campaign, I feel like that's just kind of how, how it has to go. It needs to get crazier because the enemy's getting stronger, the antagonist or whatever, and like they're trying to f- complete their plots. And it kind of has to get to a kind of a point of saving the world unless they get TPK before that. Well, I think that's one of the downsides of classic D&D campaigns. Yeah. Is it follows yeah. this formula that gets kind of predictable and boring. Yes. Honestly, I, I, I much prefer campaigns, or would much prefer campaigns, where the enemies did scale with you and things kind of stayed small. Because, I mean, if you're thinking realistically, yes, even if your heroes are getting more powerful, they're getting more renowned, they're still essentially the same person they were yesterday. They're still, for the most part, you know, barring magic, yeah. as... Uh, vulnerable as they were the day before, they're they're still a human or right. an elf or whatever yeah, yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're not some immortal crazy hero of old. You know, <laughs> every threat is still a threat. Yeah, and I think if you center your campaign more around uh, personal PC storylines and like um, make it around kind of these more intrigue, politicky kind of things, um, I think you can keep it like that. Um, cause if you, if you keep the story tied to the players and their characters, like personal journeys and stuff, then the stakes for them personally get higher, but not necessarily for the world. Mm. So it feels this, it's, it's this, it's the same sense in the way that the story has to progress, but not in like an actual physical sense. Like internally, the stakes get higher for their story, for their character arc and stuff. So I think that's definitely a, a route you can go. Um, yeah, I think the stakes could be raised in a different way than the typical D and D campaign. Like in d- typical typical D and D campaigns, like the stakes, like first, like oh, I've got to do something simple, like oh, this one monster is terrorizing this village or something. I have to stop that, or you know, just small things like that. And towards the end, it's like I have to stop the world from ending. Perhaps instead, as you're saying, the stakes increase in the personal lives and stories. Like yeah. perhaps if we're playing a campaign with pirates. The stakes at the first session would be like, oh, we have to escape the gallows. We right. sentence to the gallows to hang. And at the end of the campaign, perhaps it's taking down this one admiral that has been hunting you yeah. for the whole time that you've been a pirate. You know, stakes that not necessarily change the world, but change changes the lives of yeah. the characters. The, the characters. Yeah. yeah. So I think you have to kind of set that down at the beginning. And like, I think we've learned a lot from this first campaign. Yes. I mean, obviously, like, there's been, like, the stakes and stuff. I think for the most part, it's, it's, been, really, it's been pretty fun, and I think it's been really fulfilling. Um, but, yeah, that's, that, that's kind of one thing I've learned, that if I kind of change, um, you know, not only, like, the tone and mood of the campaign that we're going to be playing next, um, but make it more about, like, the personal, uh, yeah. you know, the personal arcs people, the personal stakes for, for the PCs, rather than, like, the world stakes of the world or whatever. Um, but then, also, interconnecting the two of those can be, like, really strong. Like, I think a perfect example of growing stakes and, and, like, progression of story is the Avengers. Like, they all have their personal little stories, their movies, they're not world-threatening. At the beginning, the Iron Man movie, the Captain America movie, all this kind of stuff, right? And they have, like, their own little personal stories. Uh, and the Avengers build up really well to, like, now it's Thanos. Now the whole mm-hmm. universe is in threat. But we've seen, like, this whole progression of them. And also their personal stories 
uh, the stakes have, are now higher at the end as well. So it's still compelling and stuff, and doesn't feel really tropey or anything. I think I just think like Marvel did that Super Bowl like in the way the it's way that they example. yeah the way that they progressed the story and the stakes got higher. We have looked like something like DC, like what in the Justice League the first Justice League film they're like fighting this crazy like <laughs> supernatural being like, you know what I mean? It has to be someone small yeah and to to kind of build up to that. Um, like uh, I think, no no even Guardians was kind of was a little crazy at the beginning. So this is uh, Doctor Strange. Yeah. And, like, that's, like, that's fine, but, like, you know what I mean? Having it start kind of small, personal, just make a good story, then, you know, the stakes can get higher, as well as for their personal arcs. Mm-hmm. So it's it's stayed a kind of a, a compelling thing, instead of just starting off really crazy. But anyway, I think <laughs> Marvel has had, like, a really good example of the way you progress a story and, like, the stakes getting higher and higher. What do you think of side quests? I love side quests. Whenever I play any <laughs> RPG, I spend more time on the side quests. Than <laughs> like, no, like, for real, though, it's embarrassing how much time I spent in The Witcher on just side quests. Like, I don't even know what the main plot of The Witcher is. Is there even a main plot? Yeah, yeah there is. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> I, I, that's not played. But, like, yeah. What, what is it about side quests? Uh, I don't know. It's it's A lot of it is the interactions between you and the NPCs and building up your character and your reputation and what kind of a person you want to be, as well as just experiencing the stories of these people on the side and being able to go through not something that's so drastic as uh, the main plot, which is usually pretty crazy, but mm. being able to go through something smaller and more personal and, I want to say, realistic in a sense yeah. that, oh, I'm just this dude hunting monsters. I'm just taking quests yeah. and trying to build my life. I find it really fun, especially because it it's usually a system where you, you take the quest and then you are led through kind of a sort of almost a mystery section where you know you look through clues yeah and you track the monster and then you find it and it leads up to this fight that will seem difficult if you're under leveled but if you're the proper level and you know you know how to play the game it's fun and it doesn't feel unfair but it's challenging and it's not something that's this is threatening the entire village yeah. or threatening like, the world it's just it's threatening you and some other people that are having yeah. a problem with it and i find that yeah. really interesting and fun to go through these people's experiences as well as building up your character in the way that you want yeah. them to be. That, I think side quests give you more like eye level view of the world that yeah, you're playing. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. When you're playing like you know, your hero fantasy, or you know, you're like, oh, I'm this massive hero. I'm gonna go in and save the world. You're not like meeting the citizens of the world, you know, as on like equal ground. Like, oh, we're both, you know, we're both just people living our lives. Which yeah, when you're doing like a side quest, like, oh, I'm just gonna help out this person. Yeah. You know, yeah. someone stole their family heirloom or something. Yeah. Like and that. you can you can do the best stories in the side quest. Oh yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, like for example, I don't I haven't played The Witcher, but I know about like the is it Bloody Baron or something. Yeah. Like that's a side quest, not threatening to like any the world or whatever. Like just this one dude yeah. and his family, and like it's the craziest story. Yeah, the and, story like, is incredibly well done. It's man. so incredibly well done, and it's about personal things and like these the way they deal with this complex like these complex issues of like domestic abuse and everything crazy crazy good storytelling um but it's not like world threatening in anything yeah. mm-hmm. and the witcher grows in that as well right I don't, is that his name maybe that's not his well, gerald right, gerald yeah but gerald. is he called the witcher yes okay well, he's a witcher he's a witcher okay um i don't know if that was like a witcher was like a monster or something <laughs> but uh yeah so then like he grows from this experience um whatever and also like your choices do impact this thing right yeah the choices you make can impact mm-hmm. the ending of that storyline yep obviously that's way more open in D D, right all the choices you make in yeah. De- crazily to impact everything but that makes it way better when it's just personal with this like little family this one NPC this just this one story your choices impact them mm-hmm. not the whole world and stuff yeah yeah it's so it, I think that's really cool yeah side quests are kind of what make the RPG genre yeah. to me I think like RPGs are all about experiencing the world around yeah. you and going on and like going on adventures in this place you know just living in that world is kind of escape from reality and side quests are just i think it's the best way to kind of introduce the world yeah yeah as as a dm the world building is the most fun for side quests you can explore these little things and these little secrets and these little details that if they were just following the main kind of storyline and stuff wouldn't uh they wouldn't they wouldn't notice and they wouldn't Mm -hmm. you know they wouldn't experience yeah so i think uh role-playing games as in tabletop, and then also video games, they can take a lot from each other. Like, mm-hmm. D&D takes, can take, you can learn more about D&D from playing video games 
than watching a movie or reading a book, in my opinion. Yeah. Because yeah. they're games. They're both games. They're not things that you are passively viewing, right? They're things that you are actively taking part in. Mm -hmm. um, so you can learn so much from playing video games, you know, the way the stories are told in there, uh, you know, the way you can level up and get better. Mm -hmm. Translate what, you know, like in, into d and and I think that can be really cool. Um, because, you know, they're both ways you, you play a game and you experience you experience the story personally because mm. you are controlling this thing and like you know depending on the game your choices may affect yeah um yeah so in the next campaign that i'm running a lot of it is kind of smaller scale side questy things so i have kind of like there's these kind of main plots um and then like these subplots that, that i've kind of like planned out and like you can choose to take them or not or whatever and then they're sometimes they're kind of connected as well that's really cool, like, when you can kind of weave some things to connect. Mm -hmm. Like, you finish this side quest, but there's, like, a little clue near the end that can lead you to this next thing. So that's also really cool. One of the things I want to point out about side quests is it provides satisfaction to the players because they they get a quest. They, they go on it, and they complete it in a matter of sessions. Yeah. They beat the bad guy for that mission, or they get the thing for that little mission over a couple sessions... Boom, they completed something. That's satisfaction. Yeah. Whereas the campaign story is supposed to be completed at the end. It's going to take a long time to complete that thing, to get the satisfaction. Though, obviously, it's going to be way more. You need players to be able to beat the little bad guy, beat the little mm -hmm. bad guy, beat the little bad guy. Get the satisfaction of completing these smaller things. Um, you know, so that they're not just like, we can't do anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? This, this, this storyline is super long and expansive, and we're, we, need to, we, need, we need small victories yeah. to feel... Yeah. It's you know, like so they can giving the, yeah. Uh, instead of just holding the carrot on the stick in front of them, you give them snacks along the way. Yeah. Essentially. And I think that is kind of one of the reasons that the end game or mid game of D&D &D campaigns kind of suffers is because you get to the point where you're no longer really embarking on these side quests and you mm. focus a whole lot on the main story. Yeah. And until it really picks up and gets to the point where everyone's excited for it and you know, stuff is actually happening yeah it's it's slow and it starts to drag yeah, yeah. so here's what i because i think where we are now like near the end you should be focused on the main quest like yeah. it's kind of yeah, worth yeah. Oh, yeah, stuff absolutely. and i think that it makes sense for it to progress this way but i think in the mid game i should have been a little more open about you guys going on providing a little more side quest things um and not only that you can make these side quests the reward you know, also, yeah, maybe like a personal thing or a mm -hmm. personal story arc can also be something that will help them in the main quest. Yeah. Right? Because mm. even the thing, when you guys are like, okay, we're going to go to this dungeon to get these weapons, it still had to do with the main quest. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just, we're going to get these weapons, so now we're a little more equipped to deal with this issue in the main storyline, which would be cool. But I also made it tied into like the actual main storyline anyway, mm -hmm. so yeah. it didn't really feel like a side quest anyway. Yeah, it was like, we have to do this. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, you so like little side quests like, oh... We're going to go retrieve this weapon. It takes a couple sessions. We get this item or we get this spell. Mm. It can now help us in the main storyline, but we've also just completed the smaller storyline. Get the satisfaction of that. Yeah. So I think that's that's also really cool. And for sure, incorporating... Uh, I want to do this way more in next campaigns. Um, incorporating PC, like, like characters, personal backgrounds and stories, those turning those into side quests. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um. Because I think, you know, having them too, like, too crazy in the main storyline might be a little weird and unbalanced for, like, players and stuff. But having a player's background weave into a little couple session storyline completes kind of part of that character's arc and stuff. And it's nice because it highlights each individual player yeah. during that time, you know? For sure. And I think I I've kind of tried to do that with this campaign. Yeah. This, one was, this, is, this one's been a little weird because, like, the way we started was kind of weird scattered. Yeah. We didn't start with, like, everyone write a background and stuff. I guess it didn't, like, really have tons of background stuff. Yeah. And so it was weird. Like, it's kind of, like, pieced together over time instead of just, like, starting a campaign, like, mm -hmm. how we're going to do next time. Um, yeah, none of us knew what we wanted. Yeah, we I, did, I was a super new DM. Like, I didn't even know the rules and everything at that point. So I was just going all over the place. I didn't know that it would become this, <laughs> this crazy <laughs> thing. Um, but, you know, like, for you and your dad and stuff, that was, a, like, a storyline that we explored, that you guys, like, explored and stuff about. 
Which yeah. I didn't plan for anything to come from that. I was just like, I want a reason for me to be part angelic. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. So, I have this weird yeah. mystery dad. And then you know. have this thing with the guy who's been hunting you. Yeah. And you have that kind of storyline. Um, so I've tried, because it's, it, it's kind of hard to explain the weirdness of how this campaign kind of came together and like the PC background and stuff. Um, and, you know, we still didn't really know like how to write a background and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Um, but one of the things... Uh, for your players to do when they're creating backgrounds for the characters, leave things open. Leave uh, spaces that are open ends that the DM can then take and incorporate into the plot. Right? So for you, it was, I don't know who my dad is. I know he's some kind of celestial, Mm -hmm. but I don't know who he is. That's awesome. Like, the player should not define that. Let the DM take that little storyline, create a story out of it, and then you guys play along it. That's, That's really cool. So, you know... If you're a player listening to this or as a DM, encourage your players, when they're creating backgrounds, you want to create, you know, have these little open-ended, like, questions, a couple, that the DM can then take mm-hmm. and then spin into a, a really cool story that you guys play along. Yeah, so, that's nice. Yeah. Also, once again, you have to discuss with them, like, about the tone and everything. Like, because our next campaign, I want to f- focus on, like, morality and, like, the two axes of alignment, like, lawful and chaotic and, like, good and evil. And, like, do you follow the law or do you do the right thing? And that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Because in Ravnica, like, there's literally, like, the guilds are, like, kind of personified things. Like, Boros is, like, do the right thing. Azorius is, like, do the just thing. Right? Do the thing that, against, that follows the law. And so, like, when do those come in conflict? And, you know, I kind of want to explore that. And so, when you guys are building your characters, I want you to, you know, secure what is your kind of view, worldview on the world. What I'm really excited to do in the new campaign is to, I, I don't want to be someone super special when I start off, you know? I want to be like, I'm going to be level one character. I'm going to be a dude. A dude? Yeah, I'm going to be a dude, you know? Just be a dude. I'm not going to be super special. I kind of just want to be a person living in this world. I want to experience mm. that. It's one of the things I'm really looking forward to It's just living in this world. I want to be able to go and... Go down to some shops. Not to get a quest item for the main quest or something I need. I just want to go experience the world. Get some groceries. <laughs> you know, I just got to get some milk. I got the <laughs> milk, okay? Chill. <laughs> Maybe you're the milkman, dude. What if you're the Whoa. milkman of Ravnica? Dang. <laughs> Big brain idea. And it's not like, it's not like a ganglord name. Like, you're, I'm actually you're just like, a milkman. Like, you're like, literally like, you know, the milkman. He's like, I'm a, I'm a milkman. <laughs> um, is there anything that you guys that we have not explored in this campaign that you want to do either with your character or with a storyline or something. Um, just for the podcast and then also for me. <laughs> uh, is there anything in particular you've kind of wondered about, like, hey, I wonder if I would kind of play a character like this or kind of explore a story like this or deal with an issue like this? Mm. I want to climb politically. Mm. Oh. Which is, the sense of setting is perfect for that. Yeah. I've always been interested in playing more of an evil character or a... Like a lawful evil. Lawful character. evil is yeah. such an interesting alignment to yeah. me. <laughs> I think. I mean, I assume we're not going to be playing with alignments because of the complexity of the morality and the mm-hmm. questions we'll be facing. Um, okay, what? This is kind of a tangent, and I kind of talked about this in the alignment podcast episode. But D and D five e has a great system where you don't need alignment because yep. they have ideals, bonds, and flaws, oh. and that is amazing <laughs> because you your ideals, where you're attached to your flaws. Those all impact your backstory. Those all impact the way you see the world, how you make decisions, what you see is right, what you see is wrong. If you believe the, the, end, the mm-hmm. end justifies the means and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So you don't need alignment to constrict that. Yeah, I've never yeah. liked alignments in five years. Uh, which, you know... It's more like the idea of what a lawful evil character would be. Right. Fits in because, game. obviously, playing, like, lawful evil, like, by the books is problematic to a campaign where there's not everyone is evil and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I know what you mean. Someone who is not good. Someone who, you know, is not you. I mean, I assume you, yeah. <laughs> you're good as a human <laughs> oh, being yeah. for the most part. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh-huh. uh, you're not an evil person. Um, yeah, because I think a lot. one of the cool parts about D&D is exploring characters that you don't fully relate to in some ways. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I made a charismatic character. Which I'm like, wow, this is new. <laughs> I should try this in real life. <laughs> <laughs> No, but yeah, like, like that's a part of the that's part of the the game, having fun. Um, one of the ways is to build a character who's very similar to yourself and see how 
you can learn a lot about yourself from playing a character similar to yourself. And then you can learn a lot about like empathy and stuff from playing someone who is is not like you. Maybe that's a little too deep. But <laughs> why are you looking at me? Why you... <laughs> no reason. Oh. No reason. It's like I want to empathize with the lawful evil people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like we already do that. But yeah, and, and, and the system like politics and intrigue, is that kinda you kinda game for that as well? Yeah. Can I enter that kind of thing? Because the the campaign setting is, is very much there's like these ten guilds vying for power, tons of plots and secrets and vice and like like that kind of stuff. That's super cool to me. That's really exciting. And then there's like a renowned system of building, uh, uh, gaining up your guild, and gaining more things as you as you as you get more renowned for pleasing your guild. I think that's really cool. Getting a new status. Yeah. Yeah. Such a cool system. Yeah, Ravnica is really lit because it in, it introduces just real quick. I'm gonna fangirl about this. A a third system for a character. When you create a character, there's two things you choose: race and class. Ravnica introduces race, class, and guild, and it's like a whole nother variable. And I think that's really interesting. By the way, I'll I might talk about Ravnica in another episode. But yeah, <laughs> so you want to kind of intro? You kind of want to plug political climbing? Yeah, I think that's really cool. Like. Because this world is set up for that, basically. Yeah. It's really well equipped to do that because it's a common thing here. You know, people try and climb the ranks. And when there's that opportunity, I want to try that out, you know? I want to try out someone who's might not be coming from much, but he's going to work his way up. You know? I want to mm-hmm. try something where, because of these guilds, there's these, like, each guild you know, is personified in an, like, I, an ideal, like you were saying, mm-hmm. like something like that. I think it's really interesting that there's a system built into the game like, oh, I can become higher up in this guild. Mm-hmm. I can be, I can pursue this ideal. I can be the pinnacle of this ideal. You know, I don't want to achieve that. You know, I strive to achieve that. And it's built into the game. I really think that's a great idea. And something that I think like all D&D campaigns should have, you know? Mm. A way to progress in the social system, not just progressing in levels. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I think it... Once again, d is so crazy and open-ended, and I think it depends on the campaign that you're trying to play, what the players want to get out of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, I, I've seen kind of things on the internet and stuff, like, people, like, getting attacked for, like, playing, like, light, kind of fun campaigns that not people don't aren't taking it too seriously or whatever. Like, that's fine. If everyone's having fun, that's what you want to get out of the game. Like, that's mm-hmm. great. d d is a great vessel for that. We've played a couple one-shots where it's just, like, having fun. Yeah. Campaigns have devolved into that. <laughs> um... <laughs> But, like, you know what I mean? It all depends on your playgroup. Keep talking with your playgroup. Make sure everyone knows what they're getting out of the game. Make sure you guys secure a tone and mood and everything. And I think that's really important. Not something we did for this campaign. Yeah. Because of just the weird way it started and people <laughs> came in and everything. Because half of the players weren't, there weren't the even beginning. there from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I think you joined in on, like, the... F- Zeke joined in on, like, the fifth session? Something like that, yeah. Sixth session or so? Yeah. And then Brendan joined in on, like, the tenth session. Yeah. So... Um, yeah. Why, why do you want to explore, like, a lawful evil kind of thing? It's just always been interesting because in pretty much every campaign, you play a hero fighting for good, and, or you play a character that is fundamentally good in some way, and no, not, I mean, I know a lot of people do try to play a character who may be evil or not necessarily morally good in some way, Mm -hmm. and it just doesn't quite work out because most campaigns are kind of built around the idea of oh we're the heroes and we yeah. have to be fighting these mm-hmm. big evil threats but I've always found it interesting to maybe play the you know cultist trying to take over the town or to play the guy yeah. who's you know behind the scenes trying to do something like that has his own than, agenda you know? yeah and, and, and what and what we've kind of established for this next campaign fits that the gray lines of morality and stuff that's like a part of the campaign I'm not going to expect you guys to make the right decision or whatever yeah. like the the good the, the morally good or whatever decision. And we're probably not going to make the right decision anyway, so... <laughs> I mean... Yeah. <laughs> let's think about the campaign. When have you made a right a good decision? That's That's your... Uh... Uh. <laughs> okay. I do want to point out real quick. Um, no, actually, no, I'm going to talk about that later. No, that, it's just something okay. to do, do with our campaign. That, w- that was really cool that me and Brendan were talking about. But anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to, to do something else, you know what I mean? I'm also excited to end this. Uh, right now, like, there's this big war about to start, basically, like, to decide the fate of the entire continent. Um, this massive war, uh, that's literally about to start, and 
you know, it could last one session for all we know and they get to be paid. Like, <laughs> but I, we're very coming very close to the end. Uh, to killing the BBEG or failing in the BBEG, you know, or whatever. But we're coming very close to the end of the campaign. Um, so I do want to focus on this. Yeah, I'm excited to finish the thing up. Tie up the plot, plot ends that I can, because there's already <laughs> way too many loose ends yeah. that I've established that I'm just not even going to try to tie up. Um, and then I'm also excited to just get on to this next, this next campaign, see what else... New adventure. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, I might talk about it on the podcast when we, we start. Um, a total, you know, different tone, different mood, different characters, focusing on different things. Um, I've already done some, some planning planned up some like NPCs and little storylines and stuff and I'm really excited like dude I have some really cool stuff planned um so yeah I, I guess that's it I don't know how, even how long we were talking like half an hour or so maybe maybe oh like, like 45 minutes to an hour it's really hot all right <laughs> thank you guys so much um yeah that's that's it. <laughs> sorry we kind of started talking about campaign setting and then we like devolved into everything but you know i hope you enjoyed your stay in this podcast this week please come back for more (laughs) we'll be updating the story and updating you with everything that's happening in our campaign all right please enjoy your time come back okay rate us (laughs) oh also if you want us to do the to the podcast exclusively in asmr form (laughs) uh you can go follow the uh, the podcast at what's this podcast called? At D Twenty Academy <laughs> on on Instagram, um, and you can like DM me and be like, "Hey guys, can you please do the entire thing in ASMR form?" Um, but yeah, I would update you guys there, kind of talk about the you know the kind of episodes coming up, uh, other kind of things on that Instagram cha- uh, what's it, Instagram not channel, what's it called? Account. Yeah. So you can you can go follow that. Uh, for that kind of stuff but uh yeah otherwise and let your you. friends know about us because we're very vain we need the validation we need the validation um yeah so i learned i can i have like a sponsor i can like make money off of this so if i get like more people to listen to the podcast i can actually make money off of this um not that i care about that the thing i care about most obviously is just you know doing my part <laughs> in the community <laughs> helping course. new players um but yeah you guys can let other people know that that'd be awesome about us we have, like, listeners in, like, Iceland and stuff. If you're listening to this and you're in Iceland, I was just in Iceland. It's a beautiful country. Wait, really? Yes. Oh, I, like, nice. I, there's, like, this There's like this thing. It's, like, 83% of your listeners are from hey, the U.S. And, like, 2% are in Iceland. 2% are, like, in Germany. And I'm, like, what? That's crazy. And also, Ooh. the majority of my listeners listen on Android. Zeke. So, are you happy? Yes, I'm very <laughs> happy. Because they're nerds. That's why. <laughs> Android mastery. Uh, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for talking with me. Uh, and, uh, yeah. All right, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something. Um, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, once again, uh, we will be, uh, well, I will be posting another podcast episode uh, next week, Tuesday, um, for the for the last episode of August, and then after that, we'll be going into um, September, uh, kicking it off with a Monster Monday. Um, so have a great week, uh, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you.